Hello class, in this video I'm going to show you how to create your own vector portrait. Uh, specifically of me, for this assignment, you are going to create something that looks like this. Uh, if you look, if you compare this one to my deconstruct a vector portrait, this one's a lot simpler in that it doesn't have as many tonal, va tonal values. So, uh, for example, the one that I showed previously is this one right here, which has a lot more tonal values. This one, it's a little bit scaled back. It's enough to give you a kind of a sense of what we're going to be doing. And here, let's uh, do a quick uh, deconstruction. Uh, we have the glasses on one layer. We have the hair base. And then we have the shirt base. And on the face, we have one, two, three, four, five different tonal values. We're going to try for three, uh, maybe four at the most. Uh, but here, what I like to do is I'm going to slowly remove some of the darker ones. There's the face uh, and my glasses, uh, the glass. So we're going to start off by finding the, the face base, then the hair base, and then we'll find the darks in the face. And then we'll add the secondary darks. And you can see this is already one, two, three. This is four, and this is five right here. So maybe you could even do without this one. So it really is up to you. Uh, I'm going to bring back the glasses to finish my look and the shirt. And we're going to create this. So to get started, I already supplied an image that we're going to be using. And it is within Photoshop. It's this image right here. And what we're going to be doing is in this image, it also has these different layer adjustments that we could use. I'm going to start off with this image having just this um, uh, with these different layer adjustments turned off. Uh, in fact, uh, let me bring in the actual file. This is a copy of the image. Uh, let's see, this is something else. Let me go ahead and um, let's see. Sure, we'll save this. Uh, here is the image. Again, it's the same image. It's just that I'm going to bring in this one, this assignment eight image. And so I just want to show you that uh, it's this image right here. Uh, I'm, I'm not turning on the different uh, layer effects. So what we're going to do, let's go into Illustrator. Uh, sure, let me, um, it, don't, don't mind this. I'm going to go ahead and go into File. I'm going to tell it to create new. Uh, for this demonstration, we're going to create our own. Uh, we're going to go into... Uh, well, actually, we're going to create our own. Uh, we're going to create one that's 8 by 10. So it's going to be 8 for the width. If you need to, I'm going to change this to inches. It might be set to pixels or points or picas. I'm going to go to 8. I'm going to change this to 10. And I only want one artboard. I'm going to tell it to create. Here I have my document. I'm going to go ahead and go to file. Let's save this file first. I'm going to tell it save as. And let me go ahead and change this to my, let's see, where is my documents? So I'm going to create my folder here. This is week 13, create. I'm going to go ahead and label this with my name. Figueroa Aldo Assignment uh, 8. And it's going to be Adobe Illustrator. Great, great, great. I'm going to tell it Save. I'm going to leave these options as is. Tell it OK. And now I'm going to go ahead. This file has been saved. Let's go ahead and place that image. We placed images before. We're going to go to File and tell it Place right here. Uh, but this time, what very important that I want to do, I want to make sure that link is turned on. Now, I need to go to this folder. I'm going to go ahead and move my folder so that it's already there, uh, my image. So give me one quick moment. I am moving my image, so it's going to populate itself there. Okay. So that this image here, I'm going to go ahead and select it. Very important. Make sure that link is turned on. We want this turned on because anytime we make a change within Photoshop and save it, it'll update with an Illustrator. So we can tell it to place. 
and right now I'm just gonna click right here uh, you can see that this image is the resolution is really large using my selection tool I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm just going to scale it in I could lift it up if I want to uh, it's up to you if I want to just focus more on my face I could do something like this I think I'll, I'll, I'll do this right here okay great uh, what I want to do within my layers here, notice that I did move my layers panel to be separate. I'm going to rename this layer. Uh, if you double click on it, uh, you sometimes you get these layer options. Either way works. I'm going to go ahead and call this my reference image. And right next to this little eye, uh, if I click in this box right here, I could toggle the lock. I want to lock it. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer down here at the bottom. And I do want to point out that I'm using my mouse. Uh, you can use your a stylus if you have one. Um, I'm going to be using a mouse. What I want to do, uh, let's first um, break this down, looking at my different layers. Let's see, I'm going to find my face base right here, which, OK, uh, my hair is going to be its own separate layer. The glasses are going to be on top. And then if I look closely, uh, my ear, I want to be defined, my neck right here. But then for this collar, I'm going to have a different layer for the shirt. So it's going to be on top. So I'll create a shape right here. My beard is covering my chin. So this will be on its own separate layer. Uh, so somewhere down here, I could see my face. So I'm going to go ahead and create something like that. I'm going to use the pin tool for that one. Uh, but I'm going to have a separate layer for my hair, the separate layer for the glasses, the separate layer for... Now, if you notice right here, I might separate these into two. Uh, you know what? No, I, I don't think I would need to. For my shirt, this will be one layer. But my uh, my my beard will be... Maybe it'll be in the same layer as my hair. So, all right, let's get started. I'm going to use the pin tool. I'm going to first select my direct selection tool, then the pin tool. Uh, for the pin tool, I do not want to fill color. And I'm actually going to select a color that's going to be easy to, to, to see to start off. I don't want black. I like to use something that's going to just stand out, like bread. Uh, I'm going to zoom in. And here, let me show you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go clockwise. I'm going to start right here. Notice how these, I'm just clicking straight through. Like I said, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to click right here. This is the point where I'm going to start to create uh, my outline, uh, kind of like a silhouette. So you decide how precise you want to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to create. I'm, I'm going to try to do this to the best of my ability. So my apologies in advance if uh, I don't know how long this tutorial is going to be. Um, it's going to take as much time as it needs, but again, I don't know how long it's going to be. So my apologies in advance. So right here, I'm going to, let's see. At this point, I'm just going to, well, you know what? I'm actually going to change this right here. I'm going to uh, command Z or control Z on your PC. Uh, I'm going to go one more, because at this point right here, I'm just going to click at this point again. The collar is going to be defined by the shirt base. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go somewhere straight right here. And I can't really see my chin. I'm not going to worry about it because the beard is going to create that uh, shape. Now I do have Smart Guides turned on as well, so that's why sometimes those things happen. I have a glare right here, so use your artistic interpretation as necessary. So I want to remind you that if uh, we're using the pen tool, sometimes if I if I don't like the placement of this p anchor point, I, if you press and hold down the space bar, you're able to move it. 
All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. So this is now my face base. So what I would want to do is I want to create another one for the shirt, another one for the beard, another one for the hair. Now I, I like to use this, the pin tool uh, for my face because it has some smooth shapes. For the other ones, I want to show you, uh, oh, you know what, let me rename this layer, uh, face, face, base, like our face foundation. Uh, for this color, I'm going to change the color of, I'm going to go to the selection tool. I want to make sure that this is selected. I'm going to change this color. I like going up here in the control bar. I need one of these light gray colors because now they have this if uh, keyboard shortcut shift X I'm gonna zoom out shift X I don't want it like this because then I won't be able to see it but I want to have the color uh, associated and then I'm gonna deselect uh, either uh, command shift a or control shift a on a PC so I have this so now I'm going to do I'm going to switch to I'm going to create a new layer let's go ahead and rename this one this is going to be my hair base. Let me show you how you could do an outline using the pencil tool. And again, I'm using my mouse. I'm going to switch to my pencil tool. And if you double click on the pencil tool, uh, we open up the options here, uh, options that I want. Uh, I do not want fill new uh, pencil strokes. I do not want this on. I want to keep selected. I want to make sure that uh, this is turned on, close paths within certain pixels, minus 15. And I wanted to make sure that edit selected paths is also turned on. I'm going to tell this OK. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create an outline for my hair. So if you look at this line right here, uh, you might try to, like, what, what, are we, what are we going to look at? So this is where I could switch back to my image in Photoshop and maybe uh, maybe I want to turn this into a black and white so yeah this one turns into black and white this one right here is high contrast uh, let's see what is this one has a little bit more value so I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna turn these all on now you can always change these like if you if you click on this little icon right here it brings the different values that you could change. Uh, these are some of the settings that I used previously. You could either leave them as is or you could change them if you want to. I'm going to turn them all on. I'm going to press, uh, I'm going to save this, either Control or Command S to save this file. Now when you go back into Illustrator, if you set up your, doc, uh, your file properly, which, let's see, I think because I moved this one, what is this, what's going on? Why is it not updating? Okay, here, uh, I'll show you how to connect it. It's like, Aldo, my image isn't uh, updating. Why not? What's going on? Uh, I'm going to click up here, and I'm going to tell it to relink, because I want to make sure that they're connected. And maybe I'm not using the right file. I, oh, I've selected it. I'm telling it link. I'm going to tell it place. Let's see. Let's go back to Photoshop. Maybe this is not the right file. It should be. This is my other file. I'm going to close this one. Don't save. I'm going to open up my f image again. Changing these. I'm saving it. I'm going to go back into Illustrator. There it is. Uh, computer hiccup. Sometimes that happens. I'm going to go ahead and tell it yes, update my file, and here we have. Here we go. So I'm gonna look. I want. I'm specifically looking at. Here, I'm gonna lock this layer again. I'm gonna select my hair base. I want a, a color that I could see easily. I'm gonna select red. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to now draw this area. Now you could decide however you, you want to draw this. It doesn't have to go be in one go. Like say for example if I, if I want to have all of these specific details I could do something like that. Now I mentioned earlier that it can be easier using 
a stylus and I decided to try to use my mouse because I know not everyone's going to be able to have access to a stylus so I was like I want to be able to demonstrate that yes you can do this with a mouse so right here is like you know what is this the shadow I want to include maybe not let's I'll come back to that now you decide what type of line quality that you want to use like at this point I, I can't necessarily see precise details you can see right here uh, I'm actually going to have to ride this line right here because this is kind of defining that shape. So I could always come back and re-edit this. I want to remind you that whenever you you are using the pencil tool, that your line direction is very important. Right now, I have this line that I'm or this path that I'm creating, and I'm I'm continuing to go in the same direction. And one of the settings that is selected that's turned on is to edit selected path. This path is selected. And notice that whenever I get close to my line, that little asterisk goes away. That little asterisk means that if it's there, it's going to create a, a new path, which I don't want. Don't want. I want to be able just to add to this one. So this little line right here means it's going to continue from that last point. So you could do something like this where you go from point to point. So you could always do that. Or if you go from uh, from within the path, it is you're able to edit and add to this path. So there's different variations, different ways that you could to do this. So right here, I'm creating my my hairline, my hair base or hair foundation shape. I'm going to go right here. And now I have this shape right here. And maybe I want to do the same thing for my beard. Now the problem is right here it's so dark that I can't see those details. So maybe I'll go back. I'm going to go ahead and uh, command or control save, control S, my file because I don't want it to mess up. So let's see, this is the black and white. Can I, do I see the values there? I don't. So I kind of want to see, maybe I'll just create some of these shapes and then I'll turn the black and white back on. So I'm going to save this, Control or Command S. Go back into Illustrator, yes, update. Because I, I can't see these shapes right here, so, and Remember, you decide how you want to create these shapes. So I'm going to go something like this. Great. I'm going to go back into Illustrator. I'm sorry, Photoshop, to bring back these values. Command or Control S. Going to go back here. Update. Yes. I'm going to select this shape right here. I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut uh, on a Mac. I'm holding down Command or PC Control so I could select this shape so that's selected so that I could continue to add to this shape so you decide how much you want to add to it like say for example right here I don't see any darks I'm, I want the dark darkest values so and maybe uh, you want to, because I'm, 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 this is like a, it's it's facial hair, so I want it kind of jagged. I want I don't want it to to be smooth. And so maybe I'm just gonna go right here. I'm gonna stop right here. Uh, this is like a a mouth detail. It's not the the hair. So I'm gonna use some of my own artistic interpretation to decide that you know what I just want these values right here. Maybe I, well, well, if I want to change the um, the hair to be a different color, I want to make sure that they're separated. Otherwise, uh, they'll all be the same values. Now, notice how I'm creating these outlines right here. I don't, I do not need to go all in one go. 
I could create these in smaller areas, smaller segments. Let's see, so I'm going to say, right, I'm going to start right here. I want to create another one. They could overlap, which is totally fine. All right, so this is going to be, I'm going to uh, Command Shift A or Control Shift A to deselect. This is my hair base layer. I'm going to switch this color from this red color to this dark gray. I'm now going to hold down Shift X. And then we deselect so you can see the shape that I have. I'm going to go ahead and switch it back because now what I need to do, I want to create the outline for the glasses. And let me see, let me go ahead, uh, go back into Photoshop. And I want to turn off the black and white because I want, or I'll turn on, I guess, all of them. Command S. I'm going to go back into Illustrator. Yes, update. Let me save. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this one uh, Glasses Base. I'm going to make sure that it's highlighted using. Uh, I'll probably use a pen tool again. Use a color that I could see. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to just start off from right here. I'll start off from the edge over here. So I'm using my, my pen tool. You could always use the, uh, the other tools as well. Gonna undo this because I want to. Uh, I'm creating these handles because this is gonna give me a a nice smooth shape. You can see right here they kind of go. I'll, I'll go all the way over here. I'm gonna click right here because they kind of hide. And I'll just go up right here. Remember artistic interpretation. You get to decide what shapes you want to create. Click right here. Now sometimes I, I don't like when the smart guides come back. Because uh, sometimes they get in my way, but right now we'll we'll let them be. You can see right here this shape is gonna that I'm creating is actually creating the contour of my nose. So what I'm gonna be what I'm going to do for this one I'm gonna create the interior shape of my glasses or the, the frames and I'll use the shape builder tool to uh, cut a hole out of them because right now if I switch these <laughs> I got shades um, but I want to be able to see my eyes so again artistic interpretation if I want this I would um, outline it as well but I'm gonna start off right here I'm gonna create this shape Oops, undo, undo. I clicked a little bit too many times. Click right there, great. Now I'm gonna create the other lens over here because we wanna be able to see my eyes. Alright, so let's see how much we could do. Great. 
have these shapes. I'm going to go ahead and select these shapes right here. I have this one selected. I'm going to hold down Shift and select this one too. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and press Shift X so that these are all selected. I'm going to use my Shape Builder tool and I'm going to click on each one of these so that they're all separate. I'm going to go back to my selection tool and if I expand this layer right here you can see that this shape right here I don't need. I'm going to select it, deselect or delete it. This one's selected, delete. So now I have my glasses, the base shape of my glasses. So the last base shape that I need is that of my shirt. For this one, you know what, let's use another tool. This one, I want to place it above my face base. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this one uh, my shirt base. You know what, let's use, um, let's make use of another tool. Let's go ahead and use the blob brush tool. And we'll go ahead and use r red. I'm going to zoom in. Uh, if you remember, this tool right here is now. I, again, I'm using my my mouse. I don't have a a stylus, uh, but I'm going to make a, a smaller brush right here because I want to be able to. I want to create this shape. I want to. Now, if if you mess up, don't worry about it because you can always use the eraser tool. This is a tool that works really good with the eraser. So I'm going to go ahead and use this eraser. I'm going to go right here and check that out. A nice slice. Now, one of the things that happened, let me go and undo this. Um, it also erased some of my base right here, uh, my face base. So what I would suggest is select the shape that you want to specifically erase. And using the eraser tool, it kind of works like a mask. So even though all that's selected, only the only the thing that you have selected is going to be erased. I'm going to zoom in because I want to be more a little bit more precise. There we go. I like that. So I'm going to go back to my my tool right here, my blob brush tool. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. If I go to, I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to tell it to keep selected just so I can see it. I tell it OK. Uh, that's something that I just like. You get a little bit closer. So this is where details like this can be easier with uh, a stylus. But that looks good. And what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to just create the shape right here because uh, where you can see right here it doesn't matter how where, where I go because my beard is going to cover that shape go right here it's kind of like a like when coloring or at least when I used to color I used to kind of make sh I, I want to stick within the lines so I create my outline now I'm going to switch to a bigger brush check it out and now I'm just going to start to fill in this shape. Now I just need to fill in the area within the artboard. Because everything beyond the artboard um, is not going to be included. So I don't need to go too far out. So I missed the line right there. There we go. So this is using the blob brush tool to be able to create th some of these shapes. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's say let's select this. Let me change this color. Uh, I don't want this uh, that color, the red. I want this dark color. Great. Let's go back to my glasses. Uh, I have black glasses, but I'm going to also choose a dark color right here. For the hair base, this is, I'm going to go ahead and switch this around, Shift X, and then I'm going to change this to black. Deselect it. 
and then the face space I already have that color that I want and you can see I have this right here and but I I, I am not going to leave it visible I'm going to go ahead and with it still selected shift X let's go ahead and save it command s let's go back into Photoshop let's because I want to focus on the these tonal values and you can see right here uh, these tonal values that I have it's like you might be wondering how do I I get this uh, I turned on use legacy and without use legacy turned on it doesn't necessarily push your values too much. I'm going to undo Command Z or Control Z. But when you use Legacy, and you can see that you can start pushing it, and you start to get something that looks like this, where you you start to get what's called banding. So I want to be able to see kind of like the shape of my eyes or the color in my eyes. You can see how it's dark. Uh, I like this right here. I'm going to save this. Command S. I'm going to go back. Uh, let me see. Before I change this, uh, I just changed my contrast to 64. Before I could was 70. Is that um, 74? So I actually I could leave that at at that. I could still see the details right here. I'm going to go back into Illustrator. Uh, yes. Go ahead and update. So now what I want to do, I want to outline the darkest values that I see within my face uh, with above the face base. So I'm going to create a new layer. Uh, maybe I'm going to call this one face darks. Within this layer, I'm only going to select the dark values for the face. I'm going to use my pencil tool again. I'm going to change it to a color that's going to be easy to see. I'm going to go to red. And I just want to outline the shapes. Now, notice that I'm really zooming in here. Uh, let's see. Um, maybe my eyebrows. Uh, I, if I want to, I'm, I might add that to my face space so that my eyebrow color matches. Well, it's just going to be black anyway. So, you know, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, just for these eyebrows right here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to press, uh, I'm going to zoom out, I'm going to press Shift X just so it changes it to an outline. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to go ahead and let, let me show you what I'm going to do because I know that my hair base is underneath my glass base. I could start right here to create my line and as I'm drawing as long as these points are next to each other, I don't need to connect them. Um, I could, but as long as they're uh, next to each other, if I press Shift X, let's see, you can't see this. Let me change this to a color you can't see. It's going to connect, and it's using the idea that the layers on top is going to hide the information underneath. I'm going to press Shift X to, to go back to my stroke value. I'm going to do this again right here. And I'm writing down this line because I want to make sure that these are close to each other. Now, I could go ahead and connect them, which is totally fine. So now when I select them, now I want to point this out. Let me zoom out. Let me hide my image. Uh, let me deselect. When I select all my hair base, notice that I get these little question marks. And that's because I have different values. So I'm going to go ahead and change, tell them to be all be black. And now I'm going to... Switch them around, Shift X. I'm going to deselect. All right, let's bring back my image. Here, I'm going to change this to a, a, a lighter value again, just so that I could see it for right now. Because now, what I want to do, I want to, uh, in my face darks layer, I'm going to highlight it here. I'm going to use my pencil tool. Let me deselect. I'm going to, uh, I don't want a fill color. I want a stroke value. I'm going to use red because what I want to do, I want to outline the darkest values. Now, if I, I notice right here, this is kind of dark. 
uh, my glasses are going to be black, so do I want to highlight that one? I'm not going to do this one. I'm not going to include this one because this is the the bridge to my glasses or, or that nose piece. Um, but I want to work on the eyes here. So I'm going to go right here, select this. There's this glare reflection thing that's going on right here. So I don't want to just create like an outline like this. Because if I do this, it's going to cover up this area as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to come across right here. Come back down. And you can see this actually created a, a shape. Do I want to exclude this? Um, if you want to do something like this, here, let me show you what you do. You could always come back around right here. If I go over this, this is going and go right here. Even though these are overlapping, let me show you. I'm going to go Shift X and deselect. You see that they're overlapping? That's fine. This is looks all as if it looks like it's one shape. I'm going to Shift X just to switch this around. And say, for example, I'm going to start right here in this area. And come down right here. Like say, for example, I, w I want to exclude this little highlight right here. Now for some of these other highlights, like see those two white ones right there? I'm going to recreate them on a separate layer later on. Here, I'm going to go this all the way around. I also want the... Uh, highlight or outline this nostril shape. This area right here. And you know what? Now I'm going to be able to outline the, the shape of the mouth. So I'm going to maybe uh, let's see. Should I I'll just go right here. I'm going to stop right there. You see I'm making, I'm taking advantage of the layers that are above it. So I want to make sure I go all the way around and close it that way. And say for example, uh, you know what, in, in the ear, maybe I want to select this shape right here. Oh, that shape was kind of funky. Let me undo this. Let me Go about do this all over again. Now I have these molds. I want to want them to be round. Trying to, there, that, that's good enough. <laughs> so I have these values right here. And here, let me show you. So I'm going to select all these values. I'm going to Shift X just to show you what we have. So I have that, but of course, I'm not going to have it that color. I want them to be maybe black. Deselect. Hide my image. I have something that look, looks like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and just use one more tone for everything else. I'm going to create. Now underneath my face darks, but above my face base, I'm going to create, maybe these are going to be my face mids. And I'm, again, I'm going to use my pencil tool. I'm going to switch. No fill, but I want the stroke to be red. And hopefully you understand why I'm using red. It just stands out. Uh, it could be any other color that you want to use as well. So for this one, like say for example, it's all of this value right here. 
and it's very important I want to create outline shapes now th this outline color is gray I'm gonna change this I'm gonna double click because uh, my my image is already grayscale so I don't want to use a gray color for the outline because I won't be able to see it so I'm gonna change this uh, the layer color to orange and it just color it's just changing my uh, wireframe color so let's see right here I have yeah, I'll, I'll keep that whatever that little highlight is you see right here I have the created outline right here and like I said I'm I'm taking advantage that my layers above are concealing the layers underneath I'm just gonna ride up this area come back around like say for example if I wanted a, a shadow color right here around the nose what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off right here and say I'm just gonna come across I'm not going to go all the way around. You can see how uh, this is kind of messed up. With it still selected, I could always go back and edit this shape. Now I'm not going to connect them right here. I'll go right here. I could overlap. So, so you don't need to make these all one piece. They can be a, con uh, a collection of different pieces. As long as they're going to be the same color, it's going to look like they're going to connect. So I just want to make sure that they're kind of close to one another. Like right here, for example, there's these shapes right here. Notice how I'm kind of coming back to that origin spot. So uh, let's see, I'm just going to try to, I think I'm nearing completion. And because I'm trying to only use the three values, especially for the face, I, I won't add any value for the hair or, or right now because we're already at about oh, slightly over 40 minutes. This one's a lot longer, this tutorial. But it's it's useful. You can see I'm coming basically com coming all the way across. I'm gonna start off right here. I'm um, overlapping. Come across right here. So these two layers are above. Let's see, did I not get the this eye? Kind of want to leave like a little area visible. Let's see. Let's create some of this shape right here. There's some some detail in the ear. Here, oh, what? Wrong one. Wrong one. Okay. Here we go. And then 
here I want to create some edge detail over here and this is you know what I could probably use the uh, uh, what I could do over here, I could use the Shape Builder tool, but just make sure when you're doing so that the um, the layers are in the right placement. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So now we have this. I'm going to select all of this. Um, let's see. I don't want uh, red. I want a gray. Shift X, deselect, we have that. Let's bring back our face base color. This one's a little bit light, or or not light, a little bit dark, here we go. Now let's go ahead and these values right here, you can make these darker. Let's bring back the hair. Let's make this black. You see, once you start to add different, um, uh, more contrast to your image, let's see, uh, the, the glasses. I guess this is as dark as I want them. Let's see if they're black. Does everything blend in too much? Let's hide the background image. Now that works. My shirt, we'll leave it that color right here. But you could see that within this example, this is only three colors. I want you to go about creating uh, an example. Um, let this be your demonstration of how you could go about doing uh, your uh, vector uh, portrait. I just noticed I'm missing this. Uh, the rim of my glasses right here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer underneath my face base. Uh, this is a black wireframe. So let's say this, I'm going to say um, right frame. I don't know what they're called, arm. I'm going to double click on it. I don't want black. I should use orange again. And for this shape right here, I'm going to use, I'll use my pencil tool. Uh, sure, I'll use I'll, I'll use a, a lighter gray. So I'm just gonna draw a line that comes across, comes back around. There you go. And I don't want red. I want I want some uh, contrast. I want to be able to see it. So let me hide it. There we go. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Again, this is one of my longest videos so far. My apologies, but I do definitely want you to have this experience, um, being able to first try out a vector portrait. I uh, used my photo. Uh, use this as an example. Uh, give, go ahead and give it a try. If you want to create details in the hair, you you may. Uh, but really, or it's like maybe I want to create the details within my collar, so that I have uh, details within the collar. I could hide some of these. I could bring back my image. Let's go back into Photoshop and say, for example, what if I just want a couple of details. You could go ahead and, and do that. Uh, it, it is up to you here. I'll just go ahead and create. I'll try to create some. I, I, I didn't save it. Save this file. Go back here. Yes. Update this on top of my shirt base. I'll create another one. I'll say uh, shirt darks. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pencil tool. And here, I'll just go ahead and switch to red. And maybe just around some of these areas, maybe just like right here. Here. I'll, I'll do something like this. Um, my artistic interpretation, I'm just creating kind of like the, the shadow of where the where it falls 
And maybe I'll go right here as well. And just right here. And I think we'll... I want it to be a little bit pointier. All right. Yeah, that, that, that should be fine. Because our eyes would be able to fill in those details. So when we have this one, Shift X, change this one to black. Let's bring back our other layers, hide our image. You can see how it starts to fill in some of those details. All right, I'm saving this. Uh, hopefully you've been able to follow along. Let me know if you have any questions. This file has been saved. Again, I want you to be able to have this experience so that you, this will be, uh, when you're starting to create your own vector uh, portrait, uh, your first time working in, on it isn't your only time. So this is take one, learn from here. When you do it the second time around, you have a better understanding. Uh, and you have already gained some experience. OK, I've talked way too much time. <laughs> Again, thank you for your patience. Let me know if you have any questions. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.